everybody, Dan Calloway here from the Linux Unix Tech Channel and um, today I want to do another uh, system setup and review video. Uh, I did one on GhostBSD um, yesterday. Today I want to do one on Linux. Uh, I've got my eye on a distro here. went out on distrowatch.com and I got alerted about a distro that's just hit the scene and it's called Voyager Live 10. Uh, it's based on Voyager 10 Debian uh, Linux, and I downloaded the Voyager 10 Debian i386 ISO here, uh, which is 2.776 megabytes, or gigabytes rather, in size, and um, put it in uh, uh, vir virtual box uh, 6.0 and uh, gave it a spin, so I wanted to show you what it looks like. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, well, I'm on my Windows 10 uh, Pro main PC here, and uh, I'm out on my VirtualBox uh, 6.0 platform. And I'm going to go ahead and set up my Voyager Debian 10 Linux distribution as a virtual machine. So I'm going to go up and click on Machine, New, and I'm going to call this uh, Voyager uh, Debian 10. Um, and I will base it on the Linux Debian 32-bit um, since it is an i386 distribution. I'm going to go ahead and give this thing uh, 3 gigs of RAM. Alright, and uh, again I'm going to create a virtual hard disk drive. Uh, so let's do a create here. And I'm going to give it uh, 50 gigs of uh, space, a VDI and dynamically allocated. I'm going to go ahead and click create. It created it. And so now let's go ahead and click on the settings button and uh, let's look at the settings we have here. So under general we don't need to make any changes. Under system um, it's 3 gigs here. We want to untick the floppy. Select hard disk and move it up. Um, we want to um, for the processor leave it at 1 CPU acceleration, uh, leave it to enable VTX and AMDV, default uh, pair of virtualization, and also enable nested paging. Uh, for display, we want to give this thing uh, full 128 megabytes of memory. One monitor count, we want to use uh, a Feebox VGA graphics controller and enable the 3D acceleration. Under storage, uh, we want to click the empty button here and go out to the virtual uh, optical disk file uh, and select that and then select uh, from my F drive where the ISOs folders contains all the ISOs. Let's select the Voyager 10 Debian i386 ISO. Click OK or open. And, um, and then let's go down to uh, audio. Make sure the audio is ICH. AC97. Let's enable the audio output. Uh, for network, let's use one adapter. Uh, let's make that a bridged adapter here. So we have the, our virtual machine on the same LAN, uh, same IP addressing scheme as our main PC. Serial ports, we don't need to change anything. USB, let's tick the uh, 3.0 here. Shared folders and user interface, no change. And let's click OK. All right, so we're ready to launch this thing. So let's go ahead and hit the Start button. And I'm going to go ahead and change the view here to full screen mode. All right, I'm just going to go straight in to the installer here for the Debian installer. So let's go ahead and click that. Okay, so uh, we want uh, English here for language. Uh, we want the country territory is the United States. Uh, we want the key map to be American English. Okay, and it's loading additional components. You have to let this go for our, for a second here. Sometimes I like to just go straight to the installer instead of going to a live uh, CD or DVD of the distro. 
and let's see it's uh, getting ready to it's detecting the link it's looking for IP address and uh, getting an IPv6 address as well let it go ahead and do its thing here configure a network here for DHCP all right so we got to enter a name for the host and we're going to call it Voyager Debian 10 um, and let's go ahead and select continue all right and the domain name um, I'm going to call it um, let's see what can I call it here um, don't really think I need a domain name but I'll call it example.com okay all right so root password um, I'm gonna go ahead and put that in and uh, re-enter it full name of the new user that's me okay the uh, username for the account is going to be data pioneer and then the password I'll go ahead and put that in as well and repeat it all right so the time zone we're going to select here is Eastern and let's see we're going to use the entire disk um, guided uh, we're not going to do anything fancy here it's just a VM um, select the disk partitioning here uh, we're just going to select the entire disk uh, ADA V box hard disk SDA uh, we're going to put all files in one partition recommended for new users um, I, I could separate it out but this is a VM so we're just going to go ahead and select the defaults here and let's finish the partitioning and, and write the changes to disk and so write the changes uh, to disk let's say yes and so it's uh, partitioning the hard drive and formatting so it's installing the system now copying the data to the disk um, not quite sure how long this is going to take so I'm going to go ahead and stop the video and then we'll come back uh, when this process is completed okay we're almost done here it has taken quite a bit of time um, now it's asking me if um, I want to install, install the grub bootloader to the master boot record I want to say yes to this go ahead and uh, let that uh, continue um, device for the bootloader I'm going to say is dev SDA which is the hard disk virtual box and let that install we should be just about done ready to reboot this thing so setting up the users now and passwords and it's going out and looking at a net install of uh, sources list from the CD I do use Debian Linux uh, on a regular basis, but I use it on the Raspberry Pi. I don't use it on uh, as a daily driver as one of my platforms. Um, but I do use it on the Pi, and it's a Debian stretch uh, operating system called Raspbian OS. So I am very familiar with Debian. I like Debian. Pretty stable. This comes with, I believe, GNOME 3, which is kind of heavy. Uh, but I wanted to take a look at Voyager 10 just to see what it was all about. Okay, so installation is complete, and we're going to go ahead and reboot the system here. Okay, so it's going out and removing the live packages from the ISO now, so we don't have those... Uh, taking up space
and this shouldn't take very long so I'll just let it go ahead and run if it does I'll stop the video again and we'll come back Okay, it's um, still at 60%. Um, I'll give it a few more seconds to see if it's going to move along. Otherwise, I'll go ahead and stop the video. I don't want you guys to have to sit here and watch this uh, install. Um, it does look like it's going to take longer than I anticipated, so I believe I will go ahead and stop the video, and we'll come back when it's completed. Okay, so it's completed uh, its process here uh, and restarted itself automatically, uh, and so I'm going to go ahead and log in. I'm at the login screen now, and let's do that. Let's go ahead and sign in, and it's uh, this is based on Debian GNU Linux 10 Buster. Uh, if you're familiar with Buster, I call Voyager 10. So it's uh, getting ready to log us in here, and then uh, we'll go from there. So we'll take a take a look at this uh, distro, see what's going on with it. All right, it is coming up to full screen, 10 uh, 1920 by 1080. I do have a 1920 by 1080 uh, widescreen monitor, and so here we are. This is um, Voyager Debian 10. Um, Nice little background here. I like the background. I like what I see. And so let's uh, let's take a look at some of the features of Voyager Debian 10. Okay, so what I'm going to do here, uh, first thing, uh, right out of the box, I'm going to right click on the desktop and I'm going to go ahead and open a terminal here. Okay, so I've got a uh, terminal open and I'm at the desktop right now. So I'm going to put in a PWD to see where I'm at, I'm at Home Data Pioneer Desktop, and who am I? I am a Data Pioneer. Um, I'm standard user right now, so any commands I run here in the terminal are going to have to be uh, with sudo, uh, or I'm going to have to change into root in order to run those. Now, this is a Debian distribution, so it's using Aptitude Package Manager, uh, so I'll use apt uh, as my uh, command line. For anything I do here. First of all though, let me go ahead and clear the screen and let's run HTOP, take a look at what we have before we get started. Right now we're running uh, 546 megabytes out of 2.96 gigs of available memory. If you recall, I gave this thing 3 gigs of memory. So we're only using 546 megs out of that 3 gigs. Pretty good. CPU utilization is bouncing up and down a little bit, but it's uh, averaging around oh, 15, 17 um, percent. Not too bad. 92 tasks um, are, run, are, are being used right now, are running 211 uh, threads and one running. Load averages are very good, uh, 0 0.74, 0 0.77, and 0 0.34. Remember, we're using uh, one CPU, one core, so anything below one is great. Um, uh, we are not using any of the swap here um, and so that's pretty good for this kind of distribution here um, and I wanted to pull up HTOP first thing take a look at it before we get into it too much. We go ahead and do an F10 go ahead and uh, quit this. Alright, let me close the terminal. Alright, let's get back in the terminal again and um, wanted to run a uname uh, R and take a look at the Linux kernel version we're running. It's We're running 4.19.0-5-686 kernel and if I run a uname dash A uh, we're running here Linux Voyager 10 VM um, and it's uh, I686 okay um, you go ahead and um, clear the screen again and let's exit out of the terminal. Let's take a look at what we have here. Um, 
we have the trash icon out on the desktop and we've got this little um, widget out here on the desktop which is showing us our time uh, the fact that it's Sunday the 11th of August and it's got information on uh, the hard drive space being utilized, the amount of RAM being used, 522 megs out of 2.96 gigabytes. And we've got a 3.91 um, gigahertz CPU here uh, in this system. And I've got a menu set up up here. Uh, this is the menus along the top, the panels along the top here. Um, this is the uh, information here for setting up the, uh, you know, this is the uh, network. This is Sunday, August 11th is the calendar uh, that we have set up here. Uh, we've got the time. Um, we have um, this information for the audio. Here's the network information that we have set up here as well. And then this here is uh, the information for you know, the wired connection, the mobile device, the night light is on, here I am here, and I can sh uh, restart or shut down the system from there. I've got a, uh, uh, a Docker down here, uh, got Firefox, uh, ESR, files, text editor, notes, calendar, show desktop, uh, SM tube software, if I open that up, it shows uh, all the software that we have for the audio video, communications and news, productivity, the add-ons, graphics and photography and games. So we've got a ton of games here already loaded and you've got a ton more that you can grab uh, as soon as this comes up. So you know you have no uh, no excuse for games if you're a gamer. I'm not a gamer so I'm not big on that. Um, this is the uh, Box Voyager. This is pretty neat. Um, it allows us to look at different things, conky control, uh, system information. So if I click that and put the uh, tick the radio button there and click OK, uh, it should tell me my system information. It does. Um, so this is Voyager 10 VM. Uh, it's a Debian GNU Linux 10 Buster uh, with the uh, VirtualBox 1.2 host. And then here's the kernel version, the number of packages. Uh, it, that are currently installed, 2380, it's not bad. Running Bash uh, shell and uh, resolution is 1920 by 1080 out of the box. It's running uh, GNOME 3.30 R.2 desktop environment. Um, got a GNOME terminal and etc. etc. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and close that. And let's close the terminal out here. And then finally, we've got the screenshot over here, and then I've got show applications. And if I show applications, uh, it's going to bring the applications all up here in this appearance as well. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and set up the uh, pull down the menu here and show you that we have a separate menu set up. So accessories here, I've got uh, you know everything here: uh, documents, files, uh, maps, notes, text editor to do uh, USB image writer, stick formatter, and weather. Now let's go back. Uh, if we go down to games, as I mentioned, we've got a whole host of games here. Uh, lots of games. Okay, I'm not going to go through all of them. Let's go back and uh, let's take a look at some of the graphics that we have. We've got GNU uh, image manipulation. We've got image magic. Uh, LibreOffice Draw, Shotwell, and Simple, Simple Scan. I'm going to go back here. For Internet, we have um, Firefox ESR, uh, GFTP, which is a GNOME file transfer protocol client, Thunderbird, Pigeon Internet Messenger and Transmission, BitTorrent. It's a BitTorrent client. Um, for Office here, uh, we've got uh, Calendar, Contacts, uh, LibreOffice Suite, for sound and video, uh, we've got Cheese, Music, uh, PDV, Rhythm Box, Simple Scan, a Screen Recorder, which is what I'm using to record this, uh, SM Tube, Sound Recorder, Videos, a VLC Media Player, um, System Tools, we've got uh, a bunch of those, uh, Box Voyager, uh, GW Package Installer, 
If I click on that, it should open up the package installer. I'll show you what that looks like. I closed it. Okay, this is what the package installer looks like. And um, there's nothing loaded in here, so I'm just going to go ahead and close it. And uh, we'll install a package here in a moment. Um, let's see, we were at System Tools, I believe. Um, the Grub Customizer, here's HTOP, here's Settings, uh, here's Software, Software and Updates. Let's click on that. And so we can go in here for, um, you know, other software, for Debian software, um, officially supported main and source code. We've got other software here, uh, updates, security updates and recommended, both are ticked. Uh, it's going to be automatically checking for these updates daily, but you can change that every two days, weekly, every two weeks, never. I'm just going to leave it at daily. This is not a rolling distribution, so this is important that you keep this on an automatic basis here. Um, when there are security updates, it says I've got it set for download and install automatically. You can change that to display immediately or download automatically if you want. I'm going to leave it at download and install. Authentication, um, you've got trusted software providers, and then developer options, you've got those as well. Let me go ahead and close this. All right, let's see what else we have uh, for utilities. We've got a host of utilities. Archive Manager, Backup, Disk Usage Analyzer, Disks, Fonts, uh, Passwords and Keys, Remote Desktop Viewer, Screenshot, System Monitor, uh, the Terminal, and Tweaks, okay? And then other, let's see what we have there. Show Desktop and Advanced Network Configuration. All right, so We've got the uh, home, documents, downloads, music, pictures, videos, software, settings, tweaks, terminal, and activities overview here. Uh, you can type in, let's see if GIMP is installed. Uh, yeah, GIMP is installed, so let's go ahead and click GIMP, bring GIMP up. And uh, I love GIMP. Um, this is, should be version 2.10, and it is. And the first time you launch it, it does take a little bit uh, of time to load. But on subsequent launches, it should fire right up. All right, so let's, uh, let's bring that up to full screen. And let's see if we have an image we can bring in to take a look at it. Uh, yeah, let's take a look at this. And there we go. So this is our desktop that we were looking at when we first launched it. All right, so this is the full GIMP uh, application. Let's go ahead and close GIMP. And uh, let's go back into the terminal. And um, what I want to do is open the terminal and see if we have FileZilla available in our uh, repo, local repository or the remote repository. And so what I'm going to do is issue the command sudo apt search uh, FileZilla and uh, put in the password. And see if we have FileZilla. Yep, we sure do. We've got FileZilla, and the version we have is stable 3.39 uh, i386. Okay, and so let me clear the screen and let me do a sudo apt get install FileZilla. And let's go ahead and install it. And then once we get it installed, we'll open it up, take a look at it. I do most of my work in the terminal. I don't rely on uh, software install GUI. All right, so let's do um, an exit here, get out of the terminal. And then let's go back to that menu. And FileZilla should be under Internet, I believe. And there it is. And so let's do a right click on FileZilla and open it. And let's go ahead and click OK. And here it is. Let's open it up to full screen. And uh, it's located at 192.168.1.157. And I've got a username here of Dan Cal. Well, wait a minute. What happened to the host here? Let me go back. I don't know what happened there. 
Hmm, interesting. We have to uh, shut it down and open it back up. I don't know what's happened here. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Uh, something happened to the application. Let's go back into Internet and also open that back up again. All right, and let's uh, let's put in that IP address again, 192.168.1.157, username of Dan Calloway, and the password, let's put that in. All right, and let's go ahead and then uh, hit connect. And let's save the password. Yeah, let's do that. And um, server does not exist, or does not support FTP over um, TLS. That's okay. Always allow and secure. This is a VM. doesn't matter. And there we go. I'm connected to my personal cloud. Let me double click on public. And uh, let's look at shared videos. And let's take a look at what we have here. We've got uh, a bunch of videos here. Python stuff. All right. Uh, SW reception, networking. I've got a bunch of networking files here. Uh, videos, if you will. Uh, for instance, I've got one on IIS 7 self signed certificate MP4. All right. So this is uh, FileZilla accessing my personal cloud, which is a, a five terabyte personal cloud. Let me go ahead and close that. All right, so uh, this has been a quick review of uh, Voyager Debian 10, which is a brand new distro. Just showed up on my radar here at distrowatch.com. Thought I'd show it to you. Hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you like the video, hit that like button. And if you want to subscribe to my channel, go ahead and hit subscribe. And make sure you hit that little bell on the right-hand side so you'll get notified every time I upload a video. And so thank you very much for watching.